to Babylon, three score and ten. Can I get there by candlelight? Yes, I'm back again. Yes, I'm back again. The children, the dear, dear children. How many miles to Babylon? Three score and ten. Jane, she was the youngest, you know, Edith. I can still hear her sitting on the stairs outside my rooms, these rooms, singing that insistent little song round and round. How many miles to Babylon? <laughs> uh, now, Edith, uh, where were we? Uh, read back what I've written so far. Certainly, sir. The story of the amulet, a memoir by. That's it, sir. Good gracious! Is that as far as we've got? That's all you've dictated, sir. Well, I must stop reminiscing and get on. It's the middle of the morning already. Edith, remind me to stop reminiscing. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> the story of the amulet, a memoir by. Uh, by a learned gentleman. Yeah, I think anonymity would be prudent in this particular instance. The learned gentleman, that's what the children used to call me. <laughs> they spent the summer in this house 25 years ago, back in the reign of the old king, Edward Seventh. Now, you'll be too young to remember him. Now, <clears throat> he was the son of Queen Victoria, and interestingly enough... <laughs> uh, uh, Sir, you're wondering. Oh, gracious, so I am. <laughs> Thank you, Edith. The story of the amulet. A memoir by a learned gentleman, as told to him by Cyril Robert... Anthea and Jane, to whom this book is dedicated. Now, where to begin? I feel a preface is needed. There were once four children. Cyril, Robert. Anthea and Jane. Five children, really, if you count Lamb the baby. They spent their summer holidays in the White House in the Kent countryside, happily situated between a sand pit and a chalk pit. One day they had the good fortune to find in the sand pit a strange creature called a Samiad, or sand fairy. What a funny, furry, fat little chap. It's got bats ears. And feet like a monkey. Its birthday was almost at the very beginning of everything, and it had been buried in the sand for thousands of years. The Samiad had the power to give people whatever they wished for, and the four children... Cyril, Robert, Anthea and Jane found their wishes coming true. But somehow they never could think of just the right things to ask for. And in the end their unwise wishings landed them in what Robert called a very tight place indeed. However, the Samiad consented to help them out if in return for their promise never, never to ask it to grant any more wishes. At the moment of parting, Jane said politely, for she was an, an exceeding polite little girl. I remember she used to go... I'm sorry, yes, yes. <laughs> Jane said politely... I wish we were going to see you again someday. And the Samiad, touched by this friendly thought, granted the wish. The children did see him again, not in the sand pit, but right here, in Fritzroy Street, Bloomsbury, near the British Museum, in the very heart of London. We present The Story of the Amulet by E. Nesbitt, dramatised by Malcolm McKee with Clive Francis as the learned gentleman. Jane, you know very well that his paper is sent in there to report on the war. The Russians are fighting the Persians or something. But well, why did Mum have to go to Madeira? Your poor dear mother needs complete rest to get over her illness instead of a summer chasing after you four scallywags. And she's taking the lamb with her. I can't bear to think of Mother ill and alone. <laughs> oh, me! Oh, I trust you boys are old enough not to cry. Oh, come along now. Tea in 20 minutes. Shrimps and watercress. Miss Jane, Miss Anthea, don't take on so. I keep 
thinking about last summer in Kent. Mm. The White House. With the beautiful tangled garden. Mm. The lime kilns. Like eastern palaces. The smell of wood smoke from the cottages in the lane. <gasps> the sand pit. Oh. <sighs> Look here. Don't think I want to be preachy in any way, but I'd like to, as Father says, define the situation. Do you agree? Agreed. We all know the reason we're staying here is because Nurse couldn't leave her house. This stuffy, gloomy house. On account of her lodger, the learned gentleman on the top floor. Get to the point, Anthea. Well, don't let's think about how horrid it all is. There are heaps of things you can see in London without paying for them. <laughs> <laughs> Hurrah for liberty. <laughs> oh, but Nurse won't let us go by ourselves. Yes, she will. I asked Father this morning if we might go for expeditions, and he said yes. Hurrah! <laughs> <Wow. laughs> What's more, he told old nurse we might, as long as we let her know where we were going. <laughs> Three cheers for our clever sister Jane. Hip, hip. Hurrah! Hip, hip. Hurrah! Hip, hip. I say, let's go now. <laughs> Hurrah! <Come on. laughs> they started to walk to St James's Park. They started, I repeat, but they never got there. Between Fitzroy Street and St. James's Park, there are a great many streets containing a great many shops that you cannot help stopping to look at. <gasps> Gold lace and deeds! Pictures and jewellery! Dresses and hats! Oysters and lobsters! <laughs> oh, look at the <laughs> And suddenly, their sorrow did not seem nearly so impossible to bear. Presently, by some wonderful chance, they found themselves in the little criss-crossy streets that held the most interesting shop of all. A shop where live things were sold. So, look here. The course. Oh. It must be fairly beastly to be a bird in a cage. Mm. All the dogs are chained up, Anthea. They're saying, buy me, buy me. There aren't any snakes. <sighs> oh, I hate things that haven't got any legs. It's worse when they have too many. <gasps> Think of centipedes. Oh, oh. oh. What's that? Buy me. Do. Please buy me. Oh, Samiat, where are you? Stoop down and pretend to be tying up your boot lace. I see it's undone, as usual. Samiat, how did you... No time for questions. Tell the others I'm here, but tell them to look at some of the low, common beasts while I'm talking to you. The shopkeeper mustn't think you care much about me, or he'll put a price upon me far, far beyond your means. Althea, Jane, Bobs, prepare for a great surprise. Mm -hmm. In the hutch at my feet is an old friend of ours. Oh, oh don't look. Everyone look at the white rat. It's the Samiad. <gasps> the Samiad? Oh, shh. It wants oh. us to buy it. Keep looking at the white rat mm -hmm. and count your money. Oh, pretend to try the other bootlegs. I've got you. Now, go in and ask the price of lots of other things. Then say, what do you want for the mangy old thing in the third hut from the end? Oh, Sammy. Oh, don't mind my feelings. I don't think he'll put a high price on me. I've bitten him 11 times since I came here the day before yesterday. Oh. If he names a higher price than you can afford, haggle. Haggle? Beat him down. How much have you got? Three shillings and five pence farthing, plus this sovereign which father gave us. Now, here's the plan. We go into the shop. Well? Uh, what do you want for that white rat? Eight pence. And the lizards? Nine pence. Each. And the puppies? No, 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 look at you. Oh. I ain't going to have you a coming in here prizing every animal in the stock just for your larps. If you're a buyer, be a buyer. What do you want for that mangy old monkey in the third hutch from the end? Oh, mangy young monkey yourself, blooming cheek. Oh, out he goes. Oh, oh, don't be cross. He really does want to know that. Oh, does he? Does he indeed? Then, uh, one pound ten's my price. Oh, uh, fifteen shillings. That's the only one ever seen in London. Twenty-five shillings. Eighteen and six. Oh, to be in a zoo, twenty-two bob. A sovereign. A guinea. Done. Done. Show us your money. There you are, twenty-one shillings. Uh, well, I suppose I must let you have it, <clears throat> but it's worth treble the money, so it is. Well, now, 
Come here, you mangy owl. Ah! Oh, 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 it's bit me to the marrow. Oh, oh, here, here's your bag. You get it out. That's it. Mm. Pour into the bag, dear Samyad. We'll soon have you home. What did she call it? Here, have you met the brute before? Yes, he's an old friend of ours. <laughs> Run! <laughs> hey, hey, no, if I'd known that, I'd no, you, you cheats, you swindlers! On the way home, they bought a bag of silver sand from an oil and colour shop in Bloomsbury, and they put it and the Samoyed in an old china wash basin. It rubbed itself and rolled itself and shook itself and screamed itself. Beautiful sand. Poor dear Samoyed. It scratched itself and preened itself till it felt clean and comfortable. And then it scrabbled a hasty hole in the sand and went to sleep in it. The children hit the basin under the girl's bed and went down to supper. The next morning, after breakfast... Now, look here, children. We'd better begin as we mean to go on. You've saved my life and I'm not ungrateful, but... It doesn't change your nature. You're still very ignorant and rather silly. Silence! I won't stand any nonsense. Furthermore, I'm not to be treated like a pet and played with. It's too, too demeaning. We're to be treated as we deserve. I with respect, and all of you with... uh, I don't wish to be offensive. Won't you tell us how you came to be for sale in that awful shop? Oh, well, last summer, when the holidays were over and you had left the White House, I went to sand for a bit and slept. To sand? You go to bed, I go to sand. A A man caught me, and I bit him. And he put me in a bag with a dead rabbit, and I bit him again. (laughs) And he brought me to this city, which I'm told is called the modern Babylon. Though it's not a bit like the old Babylon. And he sold me to the man you bought me from. And then I bit them both. (laughs) Now, what's your news? Uh, Father's gone abroad to write about the war between the Russians and the Persians. Mother and the Lamb have gone to Madeira because Mother was ill. Oh, Samyad, I wish they were all safe home again. I'm sorry, but you must remember, I can't give you any more wishes. Anthea, what did you promise on that last day in the sand pit? <sighs> that none of us would ever ask for another wish. And a promise made to a Samyad can never be broken. Oh, oh please don't it's cry. Good. You know how it upsets me. Oh, dear. I feel as if I should provide you with some new kind of magic. That's easier said than done. Not a bit of it. There's one of the strongest magic charms in the world, not a stone's throw from where you bought me yesterday. I saw it out of the corner of my eye on our way home in the window of a shop. If only you can buy that, you will possess a magic even older and more powerful than mine. Crikey! Well, what do you think? Let's get our hats. Hurrah! Hurrah! Oh, will you come with us? Of course. How else will you find the shop? We can't use the paper bag. It's crumpled and torn. Hmm. I know. We'll put you in Mother's Wicker shopping basket and cover you with a napkin. (laughs) Come on. Concertina, silk handkerchiefs. Oh, pistols and swords. Brass, curly whirly things. Oh, this is all very entertaining, but what look! Here? That shelf at the back. The silver tray with the bric a brac on it. That's it! That's it! There, under the snuff box, you can see a bit sticking out. <gasps> like a little horseshoe. And red like sealing wax. Yes, that's it. Now, Anthea, you must do what Cyril did before. Mm-hmm. We'll wait out here. Off you go. talking to the man. What's he saying? I wish we could hear. What's he doing now? Uh, She's coming back. Well? Well, I've got it in this bag. (laughs) Don't look now. Home, quickly. (gasps) (laughs) 
Hey, show me it. You sit on the table. Oh. Everyone else, pull up a chair. Yeah. Now then, let me see the charm. There we are. But there's only half of it here. That's all there was. There should be another piece exactly the same, and a metal pin to fasten them together, one oh. on top of the other. What should we do? You must go back to the shop, Cyril, and see if they have the other half. Now, hurry. Oh. oh, cheer up. Even the bit you've got is some use. Where is he? Oh, perhaps he couldn't find the shop again. He's been gone for simply ages. Something must have happened. I hope he didn't bump into our friend at the pet shop. Mm. Come on, Cyril. Hurry up, please. Well? Oh, no go. Oh. oh. The man said it was perfectly complete. He was plain nasty. Things might be worse. You still want to get it, don't you? Oh, yes. rather. Well, don't be surprised if you have a few adventures before you find the other half. We don't mind adventures. <laughs> then pay attention and I'll tell you all I know. Oh, well, of course, I, I can't actually do that because I know far too much. But I'll, I'll tell you all I know about the amulet. The what? This carved red stone is half of an amulet, a powerful talisman which has the power to make the corn grow and the trees bear fruit. It can ward off all the things that make people unhappy, jealousy, pride, selfishness. And best of all, when the amulet is whole, it can give you your heart's desire. A heart's desire? Now you're talking. Of course I am, so there's no need for you to. Yes, but all that's what the whole charm can do. Isn't there something we can do with just our half? Indeed there is. Your half of the amulet has the power to take you anywhere to look for the other half. Oh. Does it know where to look? No. Oh. And do you? Certainly not. The first step is to get the amulet to talk. Talk? talk. Can it talk? Can it really talk? Naturally. All you have to do is read the name that's written on your half of the amulet. If you join hands in a circle, think of your heart's desire and say the name out loud, the amulet will have the power to do well. Let me look at it again. There's no name on it. Not even any writing. Just these these squiggly pictures of chickens and snakes and things. Oh, give me patience. That is picture writing called hieroglyphics. If you can't read it, you must find someone who can. can you, and before can... you ask, no, I can't. It's more oh. ancient than even me. You must find a priest. We don't know any priests. We know a clergyman. But he only knows Greek and Latin, and it isn't either of those. Oh, I know. Oh, is there no wise man in your Babylon who can pronounce the names of the great ones? Upstairs! What? what? The learned gentleman on the top floor. Oh, of course. He must know lots of languages. Well, what are you waiting for? Try him. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> This is where I come into the story, Edith. Oh, indeed, sir. I don't actually recall the children's feet on the stairs outside the door. I don't recall the knock on the door. I don't even remember the creak of the door as it slowly opened. What I do remember is their astonished reaction as they stumbled across my Egyptian mummy case. <laughs> Oh, oh, I see you've discovered my sarcophagus. We <laughs> beg your pardon, sir. On the contrary, it is I who beg yours. I apologise for Ankotep. A mummy is not at all the sort of thing you expect to find in a top-floor front in Bloomsbury. <laughs> well, come in, come in, come in, come in. <laughs> you are the children who live downstairs, are you not? Yes, sir. Ah, I thought I'd pass you occasionally in the hallway. Won't you sit down? Oh. Do move that papyrus. <laughs> How can I help you? Oh, we, we know you are very, very learned. Oh, you are too kind. We've got part of a charm, and someone told us it would work. Oh. Even though we only have half of one. But it won't work unless we can say the name that's on it. Bless me, who told you all this? The sound... Shh, I'm very sorry, but we're not at liberty to tell you. I see. Is it some sort of 
game that you're engaged in? Yes, that's what it is, a game. <laughs> Let me see this mysterious antiquity. Here it is. Thank you, my dear. Good gracious. <laughs> Where did you find this? Oh, we didn't find it. We bought it at a shop. Not far from Charing Cross. I ought to tell you that it is extremely valuable. Extraordinarily valuable, I may say. Yes, we know that. So, of course, we want to keep it. Mm. Well, yeah. keep it carefully, then. And, and, and if ever you should want to part with it, may I ask you to give me the refusal of it? Oh, certainly. But we don't want to sell it. We want to make it do magical things. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I'm afraid the days of magic are over. They aren't really. Can you read it? Uh, yes, the, the name is uh, Hekau Seche. Uh, Hekau Seche. Er, uh, Hekau Seche. Oh, thanks awfully, sir. <laughs> I do hope we haven't taken up too much of your time. Not at all. Come again. <laughs> well, we will. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. 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 We've got it. We've got the name. I vote we speak to the Amit straight away. Oh, oh, yes. We'll need the Samiad to give us instructions. Oh, Bob's and I will fetch it from the parlour. Let's meet in the girls' bedroom in... Two minutes. Agree? Agree. <laughs> Open a window, Jane. I need to clear my head. What a beautiful sunny afternoon. But no time for that now. Everyone, sit on the floor in a circle. <laughs> what love? <laughs> Shh, no talking. <laughs> Cyril, put the amulet in the middle. And everyone join hands. Now, search... Deep in your heart for that which you desire most in the world. Mother. Father. Lamb. Adventure. Sand. Beautiful sand. Hold the thought. Concentrate on it. Is everyone ready? Yes. yes. Now, Anthea, say the word of power. Uh, Echo. Instantly, the whole light of the world seemed to go out. The room was dark. The world outside was dark. Look! A light! Who calls me? Shh! A voice! Who summons the voice of the amulet? Speak. What is it you would hear? Samiad, can you ask the voice? I am not permitted to address this ancient magic directly. You must ask it things. You must find out all the answers. Please, oh great voice. We want to know where the other half of the amulet is. The part of the amulet which you seek no longer exists. Oh, I say. It and the pin that join the two halves were broken and ground into dust. If you would find the other part of the amulet, you must seek it in a place and time where it is still whole. Where can we find the other part of you? In the past. What part of the past? I may not tell you for fear the magic will not work, but listen carefully. If you will choose a time in history, I will take you to the place that then held the amulet. You yourselves must find it in order to attain your heart's desire. When did you see it last? I mean, when was it taken away from you? Thousands of years ago. The amulet was perfect then and lay in a shrine and worked wonders. In time, there came strange fighting men who destroyed my shrine. A stone was dropped on the amulet as it lay on the altar, and one half was sundered from the other. The half you seek was ground to dust beneath the feet of the warriors. The other half lay buried in the desert sand for many thousands of years, until it was dug up by learned men and brought here to this far northern country. And now, the name of power having been spoken, I am also here. Can you really take us to the past? Yes. 
You must hold me up and speak the word of power. And one by one, beginning with the firstborn, you shall step through me into the past. But let the last that passes be the one that holds me. And let him not lose me, lest you remain in the past forever. Forever? What a nasty idea. Horrid. When you desire to return, hold me up towards the east and speak the word. Then, passing through me, you shall return to this time and it shall be the present to you. Oh, crikey. That's tea. Oh. Will you please make it proper daylight again so that we can go down? I hear you and accede to your request. Thank you so much for your kindness. We've enjoyed ourselves very much indeed. Thank you. The beautiful light faded slowly and suddenly changed to the dazzlement of the day and the great soft rustling sound of London. What can we do today? It's still raining, so we can't go and see the sights of London. Oh, do shut up, Jane. Try another song. I'm sick to death of that one. Oh. We ought to go and look for the amulet. What's the good of having a first-class charm and keeping it idle? I'm game for anything, of course. But I don't think the girls are too keen. Oh, yes, I am. If you think I'm afraid, I'm not. Anyway, you're forgetting. We don't know where to ask the amulet to take us. <sighs> Excuse me, am I mistaken in thinking that I caught a familiar word just now? Were you not singing some old ballad of Babylon? Jane was singing How Many Miles. I, well, I, I didn't catch all the words. I wonder, would you recite them to me? Everyone, two, three, four. How, How many, many miles, miles to Babylon? Three, three score and ten. ten. Can, Can I, I get, get there, there by candlelight? Candle yes, yes, and back, back again. again. Charming, charming. <laughs> oh, I wish one could get there nowadays. <laughs> Can't you? Oh... Babylon was destroyed many thousands of years ago. I say, you know the amulet we showed you? Yes. Do you think it was ever in Babylon? Oh, well, quite, quite possibly. <gasps> Were Babylon people savages? Oh, on the contrary, the Babylonians had a very high level of culture. They were very learned, with glorious libraries and high towers for the purpose of astrological and astronomical observation. <laughs> Pardon? I mean for stargazing and fortune-telling. Oh. Uh, and, of course, the fabled hanging gardens were one of the wonders of the ancient world. I'll go to Babylon, if you like. Done. Done. <laughs> ah, one can go so far in dreams when one is young. Now, I must return to my manuscript. Have a good game. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Let's get the Sammy out and go now. Babylon sounds a most frightfully jolly place. Girls from as usual. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did the voice say? Beginning with the firstborn, Cyril's the eldest. What about the Sammy It was born thousands of years ago. Born? Born? I was never born. Besides, as far as the amulet is concerned, I'm a very insignificant presence, a mere observer. Oh, that settles it then. I must go first, then Anthea, then Robert. And Jane, you'll be last. Here, hang the amulet around your neck. You understand about holding on to it as you go through, don't you? Yes, but I wish I hadn't got to be last. Oh, I know. You can carry the Samiad in the wicker basket. <laughs> if it'll let you. Mm. I don't mind who carries me as long as they don't drop me. Now, can we please get on? Jane, hold out the amulet at arm's length. Yes. Cyril, tell it where we want to go. We want to go to Babylon to look for the part of you that was lost. Now, Anthea, the word of power. Ur Hekau Seche. It's growing. And growing. Well, I hope it doesn't go through the ceiling. I didn't realize it would be so huge. The opening's so small, though. Ooh. I think I'll be able to squeeze through. Well, here goes. <gasps> He's gone. Next, Anthea, and then Robert. Now, us, Jane. Don't be afraid. Not when you're with me. They began walking on the cool grass through orchards and vineyards. Every now and then, they had to leap across a little stream of clear water. It's like between the squares and through the looking glass. 
One stream led to the steel blue swirl of a great river. The legendary Euphrates, had they but known it. Suddenly, they were in front of an immense city with mysterious pointed towers that gleamed with gold and a vast encircling wall that shone red in the early morning sun. Babylon! The wall was like a sheer cliff. More than twice the height of St. Paul's, I'd say. And in the wall were set enormous gates that looked like two slabs of solid bronze. Look! The children watched in awe as the great gates swung back with a brazen clang. I don't like the sound of those gates. Fancy being inside when they're shut. You've got a gate of your own to go home by. If I were you, I should just march right into town and ask to see the king. An excellent idea. Mm. Come on, Bobs. The British Grenadiers. Quick march. Some, some talk of Alexander and some of Hercules. Of Hector and Lysander and such great names as these. <gasps> Who goes there? Samiad. I can understand their language. It's all part of the amulet's power. You, boy, where do you come from? Oh, we come from the Empire, where the sun never sets. Mm. And we want to see your king. The king, may he live forever. forever is gone to Egypt to fetch his 14th wife. The queen, then? The queen, may she live forever, gives audience today in three hours' time. Three hours? What are we to do till the end of three hours? I neither know nor care. A suggestion, Captain. If I might be excused gate duty for the morning, I could escort these young visitors on a tour of our magnificent city. I'm sure that's what the queen, may, may she, she live, live forever, forever, would wish. Uh, well, uh, oh, please. Please. Oh, please. very well, Sergeant. Don't take all day. Thank you, Captain. Now, young sirs and madams, follow me. The city was dazzlingly bright, a veritable kaleidoscope of colour. And the people. There were no black frock coats and tall hats, no dingy skirts made from serviceable material. Everyone's clothes were radiant in a thousand ravishing hues. <gasps> Sky blue! Scarlet! Emerald! Gold! In the market there were stalls selling every possible luxury. Spices! Jewelry! Silks! Furs! The children had never seen so many beautiful things in one place. Even at Liberty's? The palace, when they got there, was even more splendid. Flight after flight of broad marble steps, vast stone images of gods with wings and hawks' heads. Glowing with colour, the palace stood, shimmering like an impossibly radiant peacock in the noonday sun. Wait here, children, while I fetch one of the chief courtiers. Mm. I can't be bothered with Queen Jane. No, oh, me. You know you gawp like that. I'm tired of golden marble palaces. I'd like to go back with the kind sergeant to his home. Me too. I'm sure if you asked him politely, he'd get me some nice fresh Babylonian sand. <clears throat> sergeant, hmm? will you take me and my pet <coughs> to your house till the others have done with the queen? The may she live forever. May she live forever. Well, as long as your companions have no objections. No, no that, that would be all. fine. Then I'd be delighted. Come, Jane. I know my daughters will be anxious to meet you. Goodbye. I'll be back soon. Goodbye, Goodbye. Cat. Where are the visitors? Ah, I am Marduk, personal attendant to the Queen. May she live forever. Uh, we want to see the Queen. <coughs> May she live forever. Yes. Uh, May, May she, she live forever. forever. We come from a far empire. And the Sir Queen approaches. Let the strangers approach without fear. Kneel before the throne. Oh, oh queen. queen. Live forever. Oh, don't be frightened. I really am so awful. 
awfully glad you came. I was getting quite so dreadfully bored. Young girl. Yes, Your Majesty. Come nearer the throne, sweet child. What are these strange garments? Your Majesty, this is a blouse and uh, this is a painful dress. Um, and, um, I just realised we didn't ask for Jane's address and she's got the amulet. Oh, lummy. Cushions for our guests. I'm simply dying to talk to you, but I have to do justice every morning. Such a bore. Do you do justice in your own country? No, but we have to do scales. 20 minutes a day. It's simply horrid. Ooh, what are scales? Scales are music. Do you sing? Oh, yes, oh, we yes. sing. Oh, well, you shall sing for me later. But for now, sit quiet like dear children and hear me do justice. The way I do it has always been admired. I oughtn't to say that, ought I? Sam so conceited. <laughs> Let justice commence. In the case of the disputed will, hear the judgment of our great queen. May she live forever. Put both men in prison till one of them owns up that the other is innocent. <laughs> In the case of the alleged slander, hear the judgment of our great queen. May she live forever. The woman says her husband could not speak evil of me for the simple reason that no one could when they'd seen my beautiful face. <laughs> and I believe her. <laughs> Release the man! <laughs> Over. I couldn't have dispensed another stitch of justice if you'd offered me the crown of Persia. <laughs> now, come into the garden and we'll have a nice, long, cosy chat. The Queen rises. May the Queen live forever. Something to drink. Oh, yes, please. Mm. Mother, Cuba, mother, there's a dear. Yes, Majesty. Iced lemon sherbet, made from my own recipe. Mmm, mm. mm. delicious. <laughs> now then, tell me your names. Uh, Cyril. Anthea. Robert. Bob's for short. And, of course, there's our sister, Jane. Oh, but where is Jane? Oh, she's at the house of one of the guards at the gate. But we don't know his name or the address, and we are rather anxious to see her. Oh, that's quite simple. Marduk shall run down to the gate, find out the name of the guard, and bring your sister to the palace. Oh, may I send a letter? Oh, by all means. I'll call my scribe. Oh, I can scribe well enough, thanks. With these. Oh, you clever, clever boy. Do let me watch you do it. Oh, what are these strange writing materials, Bob's? A pencil. And a piece of paper from a penny account book. A penny account book? Oh, what curious characters. Read me what you have inscribed. Yep. Uh, dearest Jane, everything is going A1. The Queen is a fair treat. <laughs> Latera. Uh, do not be afraid. Come at once. Uh, dear Marduk. Queen, live forever. What is this penny account book? Is it a talisman? Yes, it is a powerful talisman. <laughs> Does it do magic? Yes, strong magic. Most awfully strong. As strong as peppermint. <laughs> I know not the great god peppermint. You needn't be afraid, Marduk. You've been so kind to us. Marduk, you know your task. Be off. At once, Majesty. Do you know the names of the great ones of your far country? Oh, rather. Oh, well, teach me to say their great names. We shall intone them together while you inscribe them in your wondrous penny account book. Uh, Shakespeare. Oh, yes. Shakespeare, Nelson, Kipling. Shakespeare, Nelson, Kipling. Oh, most dreadful. <laughs> and the names of their ministers? Uh, 
ministers. Um, oh, um, but Nisrog, for instance, he is the chief minister and most powerful servant to all our great gods. Well, Mr Lloyd George is the prime minister. Oh, and the Archbishop of Canterbury is one of his ministers. Oh, uh, then there's Mr Campbell Bannerman. And Mr Churchill. And Mr. Oh, no more. My head's giddy with all these great names. Besides, I'm sure you'd like me to tell you something, wouldn't you? I should like to know how it is that the king has gone... Excuse me, but you should say, the king may he live forever. I beg your pardon. <laughs> how is it the king, may he live forever, has gone to fetch home his 14th wife? Are all the other 13 alive? Oh, of course they are things. I don't associate with them, of course. I am the queen. They're only wives. The new Egyptian wife will be here tonight. There's a grand banquet to celebrate her arrival. Oh, I must go now to rest, bathe and dress. Where are my ladies? Oh, so queen, queen, live, live forever. forever. Honoured guests. Oh, Marduk, what news? I regret to report your sister is lost. Lost? The beast in the basket has bitten the child of the guard. Oh, Samiad! They have set out on their own for the palace, but are reported lost. I must attain the queen. May she live forever! Lost? The amulet! We might be stuck here forever! Oh, don't worry. After all, she's with the Samiad. Let's try to buck up and enjoy the banquet. The Queen informs me that our honoured guests are to sing for us. Oh. Jiminy, what should we sing? Jerry Ryan? Too slow. I'll vote for the Lincolnshire Potion. Oh, I know. Men of Harlech. Men of Harlech in the hollow, do ye hear like rushing billow? Wave on wave that surging follow, battles distant sound. <laughs> By the beak of Nisroch, this is wondrous, strange music. Ask whatever reward you will. Your Majesty, we seek a magic charm in Babylon. Bob's, be careful. Give us the amulet. No, Bob. It has on it the name Ur Heka Seche. <laughs> Impious and sacrilegious wretches, how dare you speak the words of power? We're so sorry, oh, you made a list Silence! Please. Guards, seize them! <laughs> what do you know of the amulet? Well, ah, the songbirds are no longer willing to sing for their supper. Send for the chief torturer. Torturer? Tomorrow we will find a way to make you speak. For without doubt, you can tell us where to find the amulet. The sacred amulet, which once was Babylon's greatest treasure, but now is lost. To the dungeons with the Oh, I'm sorry. It's all my doing. Ha! Oh, courage, Bobs. It's only a sort of dream. Oh, I say, do you think it will be any good to call on the name of power when we haven't got the amulet? I shouldn't think so. But it's worth a try. You first, Cyril. Ur Hekar Seche. Nothing. You try, Anthea. Ur Hekar Seche. Oh. oh. Oh, wait a sec. What was the name that the Queen said? Uh, oh. Nisbeth. Nisbeth. You know, the name of the Minister of the Gods or, or whatever. Nisro. Nisro! Nisro! He seems to be top dog in Babylon. Try using his name as well. Oh, Nisro, servant of the Great Ones, help us. Ur Heka Seche! There was a waiting silence. Then a cold blue light awoke in the room. And in the light they saw, coming towards them, a strange and terrible figure. <gasps> it had the body of a man and the head and wings of an eagle. <gasps> Speak! The servant of the Great Ones is your servant. What is your need that you call on the name of Nisroch? 
We want to go home. No, no! We want to be where Jane is. Ah! Behold! Nisroch raised his great arm and pointed at the wall of the dungeon, which dissolved in a shimmer of light. The Queen's bedchamber! <gasps> there shone and glowed a room with rich hangings of red damask and mirrors of polished steel. There's the Queen. And the Samiad. And Jane, all asleep on a huge bed. Oh, what is this? A, a vision? This is no vision. Walk forward without fear. <laughs> is there aught else I can do? Uh, no, it's all right now. Thanks ever so. Wait, Nisroch, can you tell us the whereabouts of the amulet? <laughs> I may not. The power of the amulet is greater than mine. I do know that the stone from which the charm was made comes from deep within a great fire on an island which is not an island, on a land beyond land, in a sea beyond sea, in a time before myth and legend. Now, walk forward without fear. Oh, Nisroch, you are a dear. Thank you, thank you. Walk forward. <laughs> Oh, heavens! Oh, how did you get here? It was Nisroch. Nisroch? Oh, you are indeed magicians. I, I, I meant to let you out first thing in the morning. Really, I did, I promise. Why didn't you stand up for us at the banquet? I, I suppose, in my heart of hearts, I hoped you would stay and keep me amused. It's so frightfully boring in Babylon. The same routine, day after day. Justice, shopping, banquet, justice, shopping, banquet. And my husband's always in such a foul... <gasps> oh, my husband! You must get away at once. Let me rouse someone. Don't rouse anybody, for goodness sake. We can go by our own magic. Anthea, take the amulet from round Jane's neck. Right. Mm, what's happening? Are we leaving already? Jane, grab the Samiad's basket. Hold up the amulet and say the word. Which is these? Um, behind me? Why? Uh, goodbye, oh great queen. Oh, may you live forever. Goodbye. Goodbye. Or heckle such a... The girl's bedroom. Thank goodness. Oh, my hat. Now that was something like an adventure. <laughs> oh, will someone put me in my basin of sand? Oh, there we are. Dear Samiad, oh. you go to sand. Oh, I've just realised. We've been away almost 24 hours. Old nurse will be frightfully anxious. Oh, no. Oh, don't you understand? Oh, you come back through the amulet arch at exactly the same time as you first go through it. Oh. oh. Then all that adventure took no time at all? It took no modern time, anyhow. Oh. Oh, why did you have to come back in such a hurry? It was awfully jolly in Babylon. <laughs> the Queen found us and gave us a lovely supper. Oh, we had an awful time. Seized by guards. Thrown into a hateful, slimy dungeon. Yeah, and after all that, we didn't even get a sniff of the amulet. No. Well, I thought Babylon was lovely. Horrid. Lovely. Horrid. Lovely. Horrid. Horrid. Children. Oh, hush now, hush. I've got a terrible headache. Oh, well, I suppose the Queen was jolly enough. Mm. But what does Mother always say? You mustn't wear out your welcome. <laughs> <laughs> And did the children continue to uh, travel back into the past? <laughs> Do I detect a note of scepticism? Certainly they did. They talked of the past at meals, on walks, in the parlour, in the first floor drawing room, but most of all on the stairs just outside my door. Summer holidays go on so long. Mm. I'm bored. I suppose you don't feel like going anywhere through the amulet. No. I've already got the Samyad here in his basket, just in case. My priceless woven basket of sacred rushes. Oh, well. I'll go, but don't disturb me unless it's an emergency. Now, if you don't mind, it's time for my afternoon nap. <coughs> what about Egypt? I'd like to see the sacred pussycat. Take my advice, old boy. See a doctor. 
You've been overworking. Uh, take a holiday. Go to Dieppe. I'd rather go to Atlantis. Atlantis? <laughs> Goodbye, Ronald, old chap. Take care. Hello, you four. Hello. Hello. What? Stuck indoors on this fine July afternoon? <laughs> uh, sir, what was that Atlantic place he wanted to go to? We couldn't help overhearing. Oh, Atlantis. A place and time before myth and legend. Before myth and legend? Uh, if Plato is to be believed, that is. The lost continent of Atlantis was a beautiful island state in the Atlantic Ocean, which was destroyed in a terrible volcanic eruption and disappeared into the sea. Were there any amulets there? Oh, hundreds, I should think. <laughs> oh, so he's been talking to you? Yes, often. He's very kind to us. We like him awfully. What he needs is a change of scene. His head is so thickly crusted inside with Egypt and Assyria. Oh, try to persuade him, will you? No, we'll do our best. Try. Uh, just try your hand. So long. Goodbye. 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 We must go to Atlantis now. We must. Slow down, Squirrel. Why Atlantis? Oh, this rock. I remember what he said so clearly. An island which is not an island. Atlantis was a continent as well as an island. Mm -hmm. uh, like Australia. That's it, Bob's, precisely. Clever squirrel. In a time before myth and legend. Exactly the phrase that gentleman used. Hurrah! Hurrah! Well, that's settled then. Let's go to Atlantis. And take the learned gentleman with us. He'll think it's a dream afterwards, but it'll certainly be a change of scene. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Oh, come on. <laughs> He's asleep. <coughs> uh, oh, I must have dropped off. <laughs> Will you come to Atlantis with us? Atlantis? Ah. <laughs> Thank you very much, but I have only a quarter of an hour before an appointment at the British Museum. Come on, sir. Hmm? Take my hand. What? Hold up the amulet, Jane. <laughs> Take us to Atlantis. Oh, well, I, I certainly must be dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> you first, sir. Mm. Just squeeze through the arch. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, Atlantis, what larks. I do so love the day at the seaside. The blue sea sparkled in soft sunlight as we looked across the quay to the city of dazzling white marble and gold that rose beyond it. The city of Atlantis. Be careful not to drop the Samyad's basket, Jane. Remember how he detests water. Shh! Don't wake him. You know how grumpy he gets. Wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'd never thought to have seen such magnificence. Mm. Uh, I say, Mr... What's your name? Bob's. Your manners. I'm sorry, sir, but we can never remember your name. Uh, I know it's Mr... De something. When I was your age, I was called Jimmy. Would you mind? Not at all. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy, dear. Oh! Oh, you down there! What are you doing here? You come to bless or the curse my ship? <laughs> to bless, of course, Captain. We're here by magic. We come from the land of sun rising. I see! We want to see your beautiful city. Then we shall go back and this learned one will write a book about it. Ah! And what is a book? A record. Something written or engraved. Ah. Like the writing on this amulet around my neck. Ah, let me see. Have you ever seen an amulet like this, Captain? The stone is uniquely of our country, certainly. Uh, and that which is engraved on it is... I can't write it, but I cannot read it. Uh, what is the name of your learned priest? Priest? Oh, um, J Jimmy. J Jimmy, a oh, wise one. I shall lead you to the kings. Now, their majesties will answer all questions concerning your amulet. Oh, well, we must hurry. Uh, I fear there's a storm brewing. Make way for the children of the sun god and their high priest! 
come to bless the city. A clear a path in the name of the Ten Kings. Clear a path. Oh, no. This is worse than Oxford Street. Oh, the heat. The people. Don't be frightened, Jimmy. I see the high J Jimmy is weary. And it is yet a steep climb to the Great Temple. Oh, wait here. I must leave you for a moment. Would you rather go back now, Jimmy? Uh, we could easily come back some other day now. Uh, we can get home in seconds, uh, just by holding up the No, 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 let, let the dream go on, please, please. Uh, the captain. Uh, he's... Oh. A hairy elephant! <gasps> a mammoth! But they became extinct. Oh, such wonders! <laughs> Oh, hi, Gigi Bee. This we did, and it was a glorious ride. The great hairy beast with its huge curving tusks went on and on and on through the marble streets, higher and higher, until we reached a great square where we dismounted. Behold, the Temple of Poseidon. Go to the entrance and ring the golden bell three times. I shall wait here and contemplate my beloved ocean. The Temple of Poseidon. What a dream. Now remember, Squirrel, what the captain instructed you to say. Who sounds the bell of the temple of the high priestess of Poseidon? Uh, we are the children of the sun, and this is our high priest, Jijimi. We have come to speak with your ten kings. Enter, honoured sun children, with your high Jijimi. The kings are even now preparing for a sacrifice. I shall take you to a lofty terrace where you may observe the rites. The ancient mysteries are observed because the city is upset by Poseidon's voice, grumbling under the sea. From this high terrace, you may look out over the city and the harbour, or if you wish, you may observe the sacrifice. The hour of the mysteries is upon us. I must leave you. Oh, look, Bobs, down in the courtyard. They're going to sacrifice a black bull. Oh, it's tied up on the altar. Oh, dear. Look at those huge knives. This is all most unsuitable. Come away, boys. I hate the idea of sacrifice. I shan't watch. Uh, what do you call this country? Oh, Sammy Ad, you haven't been taking your afternoon nap all this time. It's called Atlantis. Atlantis? We must return home immediately. I remember reading something. Oh, of course, Plato... A, a devastating flood, the eruption of a volcano. There you are, what did I tell you? Zero. Boss, come away at once. Now, where has Jimmy got to? They is below, in the courtyard. On the steps of the altar, with the kings. Citizens of Atlantis, be calm. Great Poseidon will protect us. The sea! The sea! Above the captain's voice came another voice, louder, more terrible, the voice of the sea. The children looked towards the harbour. Across the smooth distance of the sea, something huge and black rolled towards the town. It was a wave, but a wave a hundred feet in height. A wave that looked like a mountain. Oh, the people! The poor people! A wave rising higher and higher till suddenly it broke on the face of the town. Sweeping, overwhelming, tearing, battering, grinding the white marble of that once great city. We must return home immediately. Oh, yes, yes. We can't get that, Jimmy. Oh, look, here he comes. 
I must see the end of the dream. There is no more. It's over. But come home. I will see the end of the dream. You'll never see anything else if you do. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy. The volcano. I was right. What a ghastly dream. Oh. oh, I'm so tired. Oh, you're here, my dears. Can I do anything for you? Never again will I go into the past with a grown-up person. I will say this for you four, you do as you're told. We didn't even find the amulet. Of course you didn't. It wasn't in Atlantis. What? what? Only the stone it was made of was there. Oh. The stone is from the volcano. It fell onto a ship miles away that managed to escape the destruction and sailed to Egypt. I could have told you that. Well, why didn't you? Well, you never asked me. Oh, sometimes you really are the limit. I'm not the sort of chap to go around shoving my oar in where it's not wanted. Oh! oh. Predictably, but imperceptibly, summer turned into autumn, and school recommenced. After their close shave in Atlantis, the children had become disenchanted with their journeys into the past, and these had temporarily ceased. Until one day... <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, what's up now? What do you want? Oh. Just come to wash my hands before dinner. Go away! I hate you! I hate everybody! Steady on, Panther. Oh, wash your horrid hands, for goodness sake, or go! Uh, mind if I sit beside you on the bath? <laughs> oh, now, what's up? Promise you won't laugh. I don't feel laughish myself. Well, then, it's Mother. What's the matter with Mother? She was all right in her letter this morning. <laughs> yes, but... I want her so. <laughs> oh, you're not the only one. Look here. I've been thinking. You know missionaries? Yes. Well, uh, they take gifts with them. Uh, beads, brandy, braces and, and such like. Mm -hmm. Things the savages haven't got. Well, that's what we've got to do. Next time we go into the past, we'll take things like that and offer them in exchange for a sight of the amulet. Uh, throw me the towel. Please. Please. <laughs> oh. No, oh, we're being summoned. Oh, let's meet after dinner in your bedroom and ask everyone to bring along one piece of merchandise. Mm. The Samiad said the rock from the volcano ended up in Egypt. So, that's our next port of call. <sighs> now, has everybody brought one item as requested? Yes. yes. Jane? A padlock. There's no key, I'm afraid. No. Oh, Bob's. A tie clip. It's not much use. I don't believe the ancient Egyptians wore ties. Mm. Anthea? I've brought my little necessaire case, which Aunt Emma gave me last mm. Christmas. I'm afraid the scissors, pen, knife and thimble are missing, but the glove buttoner and corkscrew are still there. Oh, well done, Panther. I've brought a candle and some matches. Mm. They won't have seen those before. <laughs> is the Samiad all present and correct in his basket? Yes, fast asleep as usual. <laughs> it is Egypt we're going to, isn't it? Nice Egypt with nice pussy cats. Yes, but this time no kings, queens, or palaces. <laughs> the amulet's sure to be in a temple. Let's just mingle with the common people. We might even get taken on as temple assistants. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, the amulet. Uh, take us to ancient Egypt. Take us to where you are. Ah, uh, Hekau Suche. <laughs> And fellow workers, how long are we to endure the tyranny of our masters? Now we labour all our lives to keep them in wanton luxury. Let's make an end of it. I had the same speech almost word for word last Sunday at Speaker's Corner. How are you going to do it? Get yourself into trouble. Now let's strike for more bread and onions and beer. And a longer midday rest! Yeah. You are tired, you are thirsty, you are hungry! 
The bands of the rich are full to bursting with the corn we want. The corn our labour has grown. To the granaries! Well, well out of that. Yes, but I do wish the crowd hadn't been driven back before they could get to Pharaoh. I should like to see Pharaoh's house. Mm. I wonder whether it's like the Egyptian court at the Crystal Palace. We'd better ask directions. That man over there looks friendly. Which one? That one there, with the shaven head and heaps of gold jewellery. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Yes? Can I be of assistance? Would you be so kind as to direct us to the temple? Which temple do you seek? Uh, it doesn't really matter which. I am Rek Mara, divine father of the temple of Amun Ra. Perhaps I can help. Uh, we come from the great empire, on which the sun never sets. Ah, I thought your apparel was strange. Have you brought gifts to the temple? Uh, we have got some gifts, but we don't want to give them away for nothing. Beware how you insult the god. You see, there is magic tied up in all this. I can also do magic. I can make a waxen image of you which, as it melts before the fire, will make you dwindle away and perish miserably. <laughs> no, that's nothing. I can make fire itself. Make fire? <laughs> Only the sun god can make fire. Prove it. Ha! Nothing easier. Behold the mighty matches of Lucifer. Mm. I just take one, rub it rapidly along the sole of my shoe, and... You need no preparation, no incantation? Oh, of course, an incantation. Rule Britannia. Britons never, 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 never shall be slaves. Come fire at the end of this little stick. See? Oh. Oh, wondrous matches. <gasps> Are you able to repeat this uh, making of fire? As many times as you like. Yeah. Then come with me to the great double house of Pharaoh. He loves good magic. I shall entreat him that you shall lodge with me in the temple. Good old panther. We can have a good look round for the amulet. What was that? Nothing. Nothing. The fact is, I am out of favour at present, owing to a prophecy I got, um, uh, slightly wrong. If I bring you to Pharaoh, perhaps this little unpleasantness will be forgotten. Uh, come, follow me to the palace. <laughs> uh, we are fortunate. Pharaoh is even now in the court of honour. Follow me to the throne. Flat on your faces now! Raise yourselves up that you may speak unto me. Who are these strangers? And what do you mean, Rek Marah, by daring to come into my presence while still eclipsed by my displeasure? O oh, great king, you are the very image of Ra, the likeness of his son Horus, the twin brother. Yes, of... yes, 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 get on with it. it these strangers possess a magic not known to the Egyptians mm -hmm. and. They come with gifts in their hands, as tribute to Pharaoh, in whose heart is the wisdom of the gods, on whose lips is the truth yes, etc., etc., we know. To put it bluntly, where are the gifts? O oh, great king, behold the tie clip of the sun. Hmm. The padlock of the moon. The necessaire of Aunt Emma. The, the goddess of the nine stars. Hmm. A small tribute, truly, but strange. And not without worth. And the magic, Rek Moral. These wondrous children can make fire to spring from dry wood in the sight of all. Let them perform this miracle here and now at court. Oh. <laughs> Behold the mighty matches of Lucifer. <gasps> Begin the incantation. Uh, rule Britannia. Britons never, never, never shall be slaves. Come, fire, to the end of this little stick. <gasps> oh! Oh, 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 more magic! Do more magic! He cannot do any more magic because of the voice of the people who are shouting for bread and onions and beer and a longer midday rest. If the 
people had what they wanted, our magician could do more. Rude spoken girl. Yeah, but I will give the dogs what they want. Let them have their rest and their extra rations. Hurrah! Now, if you would deign to delight me with some more magic. Certainly. First, the Lucifer. Lucifer. <gasps> Great Pharaoh, look with wonder on the eternal flame of the candle. Candle. <gasps> Mark Pharaoh, this wondrous magic. Am I pardoned, O oh greatest of all majesties, before whom the sun and moon and stars yes, yes, bow? Yes, 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 you're pardoned. Oh, pardoned. Back in favour. Once more preferred by Pharaoh. <laughs> what is it that moves in that basket? Show me, O oh strangers. This is a magic creature. Huh? It's simply priceless. <laughs> Oh, very curious monkey. <laughs> Guard, take it to the menagerie. Oh, no, you can't take it away. Silence! You have no right to take it away. You're a bare-faced robber. That's what you are. <gasps> you dare to call the son of Ra a robber? Imprison them all. Oh. Tonight, after supper, it may be our pleasure to see more magic. Guard them well... But do not torture them. Oh. Yet. Oh. 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 Guards, torture, this is becoming a familiar story. Oh, why do we have to come to Egypt? We haven't even seen a sacred pussycat. Oh, shut up, silly. Oh, we can use the amulet to get home. And leave the Samiad. Oh, wait a sec. I've got an idea. Uh, hello? Hey, guards! Guard. Hey, stop that row! What's going on? Uh, excuse me, sir. Sir? Oh, <laughs> quite right. Uh, we've got a question for you. Uh, how long have you been a guard? Well, uh, I joined the Egyptian prison system. Let's see. Um... Oh, <laughs> you didn't call me in just to ask me that, did you? Oh, it, it must be very dull, guarding all the time. Uh, Sorry, I, I don't know your name. Oh, Ramesses. Pleased to meet you, young sir. Dull. Well, uh, Would you like to see some magic? Magic? Oh, I'd like that. Here you are, Ramesses. Well, I never did. That's a bargain. Fetch that monkey of ours and we'll show you something wonderful. A bargain? I never agreed. Oh, please do. There's a nice, kind guard. Please, please. please. Well, I'll see what I can do. Do not torture them yet. Do not torture them yet. Do not torture them yet. 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 Here you are, one monkey in a basket. Oh, Samiad, dear Samiad, come to Egypt. There, there. Oh. Now, anything else you'd like? Well, I wish I got a load of gold coins from the king's treasury. Just enough for, say, two men to carry. Ah, that word wish again. Why two men? Um, gold coins are the magic monkey's speciality. Yeah, <laughs> magic monkey indeed. It talks! Shamiat, over to you. Must I? Yes. yes! Must I really blow myself up and grant a wish for a guard? Yes! yes. Any other little trick you'd like to see? Shall we become invisible? Vanish? Vanish? Right, right, right. Never! Oh, shut the door! Dear Ramesh, please. please hold the door until we get away! Please! Very well, but I'll get into terrible trouble! Jane, quickly, the amulet! Ah, uh, Hekau Sechi! Ah, what powerful magic is this? Be everyone through! Oh, oh. Oh. Well, we're back! But where's Jane? Oh. Oh, look. There's her arm coming through the amulet. Someone's holding we her. We must go back. No. Paul, Paul. <laughs> go. <sighs> oh, Jane, are you all right? What happened? Rekmara forced his way into the room and shouted that they must take the gold and flee for their lives. Two men. Of course. Oh. They must have been in cahoots. <gasps> and did they flee? I don't know. 
You pulled me back into the bedroom, but not before I'd seen the amulet. The, the amulet? amulet? Rec Morale was wearing the other half of the amulet. Oh. Foolish children, that wasn't the other half. Mm. It was the same half that you've got. Oh. The one that wasn't crushed and lost. But how could it be the same? What did you say when you wished? I forget. I don't. You said, take us to where you are. And it did. So you see, it was the same half. Oh. Oh. But mark my words, you'll have trouble with that priest yet. Better beware of the Reverend Rick Marah. It was Nurse who broke into the gloomy music of the December rain on the window panes by suggesting... A visit to Mescaline and Cook's Egyptian Hall, England's home of mystery. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, we remove the three swords from the cabinet. One... Ladies and gentlemen, poof! She has completely disappeared! Oh. 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 Only the ancient Egyptians could have seen this. Shh. On stage, Monsieur Devant was buried under a flurry of doves and silk handkerchiefs. He was amazed to see in the vacant seat next to Robert the sudden appearance from nowhere of an Egyptian priest. Rat Morale! Ladies and gentlemen, this is a trick I have never before performed. The empty seat, uh, third from the end, second row gallery, you will now find occupied by a genuine ancient Egyptian. How did you get here? How did you get to Egypt? I have summoned him from the land of the pyramids. No, you haven't. Oh, yes, I have. Come, let us leave this crowd. Oh. I didn't so want to see the ventriloquist. Dude! Dude yourself! In the vestibule, they disguised Rec Marat as best they could in Cyril's Inverness cape, took a cab home, distracted Nurse's attention, and smuggled him up the stairs to the girl's bedroom. I repeat, my interests and yours are one. You have one half of the amulet, I the other. All that is needed now is the pin to join them. Oh, but the half you've got is the same half as the one we've got. <sighs> Impossible. The same thing cannot be in the same place in the same time and yet not be one but two. See, here is my half. And here's ours. They both laid them on the table. Suddenly, one amulet began to quiver and shake. What trickery is this? And was drawn across to the other. Like a magnet. Then, as one drop of water mingles with another on a rain-wrinkled windowpane, the amulets became as one. Black magic. The amulet is mine! Oh, stop him! He's ah! trying to steal it! And will you shut up and listen to reason? I... Oh, I suppose so. Look here, we want to be friends. Let's join together to get the complete amulet. Nice words, grow no onions. We say butter no parsnip. Do you promise to play fair? I swear. Oh, dear, the tea gong. Now, what are you going to do with your distinguished partner? The box room. What fun! <laughs> like a fleeing cavalier concealed from round heads. <laughs> they stowed Rick Marar away in the box room. But when they went up the next morning, he was gone. Come in. Oh, I say, I don't suppose you've seen... <gasps> Red 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 hush, please, hush. I am learning. Oh, what I have not learned in the last hour. In the grey dawn, I left my hiding place and finding myself among these treasures from my own country, I remained. I feel I, more at home here in the, uh, the... What did you call it, learned sir? The easy chair. Ah, the... Easy chair. He has told me all about the amulet. What are we to do, Jimmy, dear, to get our heart's desire? Why not go back into the past, at a moment when the amulet is unwatched, wish to be with it, and that it shall be under your hand? Oh, of course. Come, come now. Uh, Jane, hold out the charm. We wish to be with the amulet. The complete amulet. The complete amulet. At a moment in the past... I know... 
At a moment in the past when it is unwatched. Uh, Hekau, Sekche. You first, Rekmo, then Jimmy. Where are we? And when? This is some shrine near the beginnings of belief. We are in great danger. We must find the amulet immediately and come away. Oh, it is cold here in the morning of the world. It's here, under my hand, on the stone. I've got it. She has. Away. There is death all around us and strong magic. Listen. They're coming. At once, the amulet. Say the word. Uh, Hakao, Seche. Rec Marat, wait here in the study. We'll be back directly. Oh, oh these stairs. Oh, Yamar and Pop, there's been a telegram. Oh, oh really? What does it say? Arrive in London, 11.15am. Stop. Can't wait to see children. Stop. <laughs> They've come home. Hurrah. Hurrah! Then it was true. We have got our heart's desire. I shall have a nice to-do getting things straight. <gasps> Look, some mercy, it's ten o'clock already. <laughs> Anthea, fetch the Sammy out from your room. He ought to be there at the final council. <laughs> Now, Jane has got the half amulet and Robert the whole. Put them both on the table. Watch, Mr. Jimmy. You will see a wonder. Gracious! I don't believe I... They are becoming as one, like two drops of mercury. Behold the perfect and ultimate charm. And we've got our heart's desire. Father and mother and the lamb are coming home today. But what about me? Rekmara, what is your heart's desire? Great and deep learning. Let me stay here and be the great knower of all that has been. Oh, if I were you, I should consult the amulet about that. Let us prepare the mystic circle as before. Robert, put the amulet in the middle... Now join hands and concentrate on your heart's desire. Mother. Father. Lamb. Adventure. Sam. Learning. The amulet. Jane, the word of power. Uh, Hekel Seche. You summon me and I speak. What is it you would hear? What are we to do about Rek Shall he go back through the amulet to his own time, or... No one can pass through the amulet now to any land or any time. Only when it was imperfect could such things be. But men may pass through the perfect charm to the perfect union, which is of time and space. No body can continue to live in a land and in a time not appointed. But a soul may live, if in that other time and land there be found a soul so akin to offer it refuge. Thus, the two may be one soul in one body. Suddenly, my eyes met the eyes of Rek Marah. If both are willing, Jane, say the word of power and let the two souls become one forever and ever more. Dear Jimmy, shall I? Yes. Shall I wreck Mara? Yes. Uh, Hekel, Seche. Both rise. Come, take my hands. Come, take my hands. Such ecstasy. Such sweet ecstasy. As one drop of water mingles with another. As one quick silver bead is drawn to another. Rek Marah was drawn into, slipped into, disappeared into my soul. And we were as one. Oh. Ah. 
Anthea, dear child, I feel so at peace. Dear, good, sweet, learned gentleman. You ought to have your heart's desire too. You heard my thoughts as I heard yours. Your heart's desire is the perfect amulet. I saw it in your face the moment you laid eyes on it. Enough of this, fiddle-faddle. What's to become of me? Oh, how I wish I were in the desert at the beautiful temple of Baalbek. Plenty of good sand there. I wish I were there, safe in the past. But, of course, I can't grant myself wishes. Nor can we. We promise never to ask for any more. I think this is down to me. Marvellous, miraculous Samiad. I wish you were at the Temple of Baalbek. Goodbye, children. Dear, sweet Samiad, is this goodbye forever? Yes, Anthea, for all time. Oh, Samiad. I'll never forget you, Jane. <laughs> goodbye, Bobs. <laughs> Such adventures. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye, Cyril. Goodbye, dear friend. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I suppose it's a happy ending. The only thing it ever did really care for was sand. Mm. And I feel a new man. Absolutely, a new man. <laughs> it's them. <gasps> Here, the amulet. It's yours, Jimmy. <gasps> A present from us. Because... Because you're Regnorar as well as... And, and... Because you're a dear. Oh, bless me. Bless me. What a treasure. What a treasure. And here it is, Edith, the amulet... Nice, I'm sure, sir. But I must rush my last bus. I think I may bequeath it to the British Museum. Uh, th that, that is all for today, sir, isn't it? Of course, with the Samiad gone forever, the children felt they didn't have to keep their promise never to speak of him to grown-ups. So... Cyril, Robert... Anthea and Jane... ...told me everything. Children! <laughs> what imagination! Everything! Babylon, Atlantis, ancient Egypt. Uh, I'll type up today's dictation and have it ready for tomorrow. You know, sir, after all your historical books, it's so refreshing to see you tackle a work of fiction. Fiction? Good night, sir. See you tomorrow. Good night, Edith. <laughs> fiction. How many miles to Babylon? Three score and ten. Can I get there? By candlelight, yes, and back again, yes, and back again. <sighs> the children, the dear, dear children. In the story of the amulet by E. Nesbitt, dramatised by Malcolm McKee, the learned gentleman was played by Clive Francis. Fiona Christie was Anthea, James Richard, Cyril, Justin Towler, Robert, and Lexi Rose, Jane. The Samiad was Simon Carter. Rec Mara was played by Kim Wall, Old Nurse and the Queen, Sonny Ormond, Shopkeeper and Sergeant, Terry Malloy, and Marduk, Ian Brooker. Robert Lister was Pharaoh and the King of Babylon, and Malcolm McKee, Monsieur Devant and Nisrock. Annabel Dowler played Edith and the Amulet. The music was composed by Malcolm McKee and played by Audrey Douglas, Helen Bull, Malcolm McKee and Paul Arden Taylor. The story of the Amulet was directed in Birmingham by Rosemary Watts.